So we're very proud to present our founder, Max Steinberg. Or I should say Dr. Max Steinberg. Um, so please, Max, if you would like to get into your routine, as we could say, and um, take it away when you're ready. Uh, thank you, Robbie. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, everybody. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me. Um, co-founder. Proper word would be co-founder. Can you hear me fine? Thank you, fine. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, so, a uh, couple of announcements. One of the uh, a creative one just popped up recently, uh, half an hour in my mind. Um, Guru Dan mentioned that uh, he wouldn't mind having a uh, a background prettier if somebody mails it to him. So I was thinking, how about uh, if you have, if you are a painter or you want to do a painting project? If you are not a painter but you want to do a painting project, take a queen size or king size uh, sheet and paint something like that color, if or whatever you like, and you can write hook hook color and something else, and we'll hang it behind, mail it to Guru Dano. You can. You know, create copies for all the channelers, and we'll be happy to have that painted blanket, right. painted sheet um, as a background. That would make it special. Yes, that's awesome, Max. I love that idea. <laughs> all right. Next announcement is um, we are starting a a newsletter project, a Hukola newsletter. The idea of the newsletter is almost the same as a blog on the and post on the website, but edited, prettified, organized, structured, uh, edited, censored, even censored. And each newsletter will be authored by one volunteer. I will uh, authored meaning edited, main edited. Main editor will be one person leading it. So I am kind of driving the first one and. I'm inviting people to drive next ones. The first one is starting up slow, but uh, but it's starting. Uh, technology is all taken care of. Me and Slava will make sure it's pretty, published, and it will be posted on a human colony site. It will be posted on other sites. It will be kept there forever uh, uh, so people can come back and read. But basically, it will be introduction to different things, and it will be a news uh, product like a magazine, you know, newsletters, light workers, newsletters. Um, so, and then um, Guru Dan and Ravi kindly volunteer to read it aloud. So we'll have um, video news newsletter, video news. You call it video news. So now we need people who would actually do it uh, and who would submit materials. Uh, get in contact with me if you want to be an editor and uh, send me email to max at humancolony.org and contact me on Skype at max 2040507 and I will connect you to the newsletter group and to the uh, Google Docs newsletter place and go and do the work and I will supervise that's my my idea of uh, higher, higher, one of the highest excitement uh, actions I think it's very creative and we can do nice things there I like updates of the extraterrestrial and spiritual news for the past period of time maybe two months or so and announcements and things of that sort now channeling I will invite Erin um, as centurion and give me a minute to to bring them in.
I will keep my eyes closed. How is the sound? Sound is good. Thank you. Erin is here. In Hebrew, it would be, it would sound like Aron. I'm a centurion. Hello. I will start. Hello. Now, channel. Hello. I will invite Erin. Uh, I hear the feedback. Someone needs to mute. Hmm. Yeah, please. We got it. All right. I will start from a topic of today, and then I will invite questions. So think of questions. The questions would be good about your personal problems, personal challenges, where we could give you guidance, spiritual guidance, and practical guidance. The questions about personal experiences are fine in terms of I got an experience and where do I go from here? But the questions about personal experience, I got an experience, who was that is is not something I would would be easy for me to address. I'm not in third dimension, I'm not in a fourth dimension and barely in the field dimension. So, so this, I'm not actively playing in these dimensions. So I see their, your world through the eyes of my incarnations. That's how we play. They are independent. They have their own freedom of choice. And, uh, that's how I see the third and fourth dimension. I am more in a sixth dimension, but more or less I am multidimensional, multidimensional. If I were to come to come to third, you would likely see me as an a structured orb. Structured orb with multiple colors played, a liquid crystal of light like a reflection of sun, that kind of shape. Now, while you're thinking about your questions, I would start with the topic of today. How is the sound so far? Sound is good. Thank you. The topic of today would be Raising your frequency and spiritual growth. Raising your frequency and spiritual growth. You hear frequently about raising your frequency. And you hear frequently about spiritual growth. What's the difference? And you also hear sometimes that raising your frequency is not as important. It's just a measurement, an indicator, but it's not a goal. So the goal is spiritual growth. Of course, you are free. You are making your choices. If you choose to grow spiritually, it's your choice. If you choose to not to grow spiritually, it is your choice. It is respected. But we are all, the whole spiritual world, the whole creation is about spiritual growth. That's what we do. We like the growth in a positive way. So how do you go about that? It really depends where you are. It really depends where you are in your in your reality, in your personal reality. How about that? We will start with a, a little guided meditation where I will explain a few different things. Little guided meditation. And then, and, and that this would be for 
raising your frequency. Little guided meditation for raising your frequency. And then we'll talk about spiritual growth. Feel free to modify it, but it is a tool. Just take it as a permission slip, a tool to raise your frequency. Keep breathing, breathe slowly and deeply. Breathe in and breathe slowly and deeply. And close your eyes. And imagine yourself standing in front of you, a mirror of you, your spirit, a mirror of you, your spirit. Imagine your spirit, looking at your spirit in a mirror. And imagine the spirit to be a child. Imagine it to be smaller than you, a child which you want to grow. Place your hands, imaginary hands, in your imagination, place your hands on the shoulders of this child, around the shoulders. So you feel their height, feel their, how small they are. And as you breathe, start counting very simply. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four. And that's it. Keep counting. That's what you do. Very simple counting. Up and then jump to one again. One to ten. Up. One, back to one. And as you do that, just intend, intend to raise your frequency. Intend your spirit to grow. Intend to raise your frequency. Intend for your spirit to grow. And, and that's what you do. That's what is physical, mental, that's what you do. The rest goes in other dimension. The rest is intangible. I cannot explain to you what you do on other dimension. It is something spiritual which doesn't actually have an equivalent in the words. I can mm, hint to that one way or another. When you pray, when you pray to God, you go into higher state, spiritual state. That movement from normal life to a prayer is uplifting spiritually. That's raising of the frequency. So you are very familiar with that. Sometimes when you hear an elevating piece of music, your soul makes a movement and raises its frequency and goes higher. When you are happy, when you are thinking of higher things, your spirit goes up, your frequency goes up. When you are in love, you remember this state and I hope you are in the state right now. When you are in peace and in love, you are in a very high frequency. So that's the movement. And that's, we can only hint what it is. But when you count for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, raise your frequency. Disregard, release the lower frequencies, purify, just pick the highest note, highest note, <laughs> highest note you can imagine and just raise to this note. Imagine the highest color you can imagine, raise to this color and intend your spirit to grow. Now, what to expect in this exercise, meditation? You don't have to go in other mm, dimension completely. You are still counting, you are still holding to your reality, you're still your physical mind is still there. This is a kind of meditation where you intentionally stay in your mind, you keep your mind, you keep your mm, presence in the ground reality, in 3D. But then you intend the spirit to grow, you intend to raise up. You in, At the same time, you're here and you raise up. It's two of you, you, you focus in both places. Can you focus on two places at once? That's what it is here in this exercise. One, two, three. And 
what to expect. You might start hearing the voices because you pass through different layers of higher dimensions. And you might welcome these voices. You might start the conversations. That's you already reached there. You might see something. You might see higher dimensions. You might feel something. But understand, as you go higher and higher, there is less and less of perceivable, translatable reality. All this, you, as you go higher, you expand dimension. You connect dimensionally to your higher self, higher soul, higher layers of your soul. And there is so many dimensions, it's really hard to translate this down to the 3D imagination. So don't be surprised that whatever you catch there is not translatable, it's not describable in words. You can squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it, describe, but it's like a dream. Why it's so hard to remember dreams? Because they're multidimensional. Why the dreams are so black and white? Because they're so multidimensional, there is not even a color, color in your imagination which allows you to perceive it. It's more dimensional, but then it's when it squeezes it to understanding, when you try to come back to 3D and remember it, you have to describe it in words linearly, and it loses all this multidimensionality. Only you remember the trace of it, but, but the words cannot describe it, because there is not enough words to describe the process. Ah. So this is just an exercise. Of course, 1 to 3 to 10 is only one of the mantras, you can say. And for every one of you, there will be a different speed. Some would say it very quickly. Some would say it very slowly. Maybe 7 is the best number for you. Maybe it's 13 is the best number. Maybe 9 is the best number. Maybe it's not numbers. Maybe you want to say, I want to raise my vibration. I'm rising up. I'm going up. I, I'm going up to the God. I'm going up to the spirits. Whatever phrase you pick is fine, but this sequence one to three it has its own uh, symbolic meaning. You go up in numbers, and it's very easy. You can see a tune also going up. It's your choice. One to ten seems to be one of the most mm, simplest things to do. Now, as you do this, do this guided meditation. You raise your child's spirit grows higher and higher and higher. Imagine it to grow higher and higher. And you still hold it, you still connect it to it. Right? And then stay there in the highest point which feels comfortable. And then come back. Come back and remember your connection. Remember this highest tune you can reach at this state of your development. This memory of the highest spiritual tune, highest spiritual frequency you can hold is very important. Now you carry it in your 3D world. You return your focus of attention back to here. You can come back if you like. Now, how often do you want to be there? How often do you want to raise your frequency? That is a Mm, a nice question, a huge question, because it's not the goal to be in high frequency all the time. It's not the goal to be in the clouds, in higher dimensions all the time, because it might become unhealthy. So being healthy on all dimensions, being healthy in all dimensions, that could be the goal. That could be your choice. That would that I would recommend for you to choose. So be there in a higher dimension, in a higher frequency, as often as, as it is healthy for you. And be down here below in 3D as much as it is healthy for you. You are now in a state of development where you are linking you are connecting high and low. You are an ambassador of high into low. You are an ambassador 
into low from the high. You are an in-betweener. You are an in-betweener. You are a connector. You are a hybrid. You are a healer. You heal the dimensions. You connect them. That's your purpose if you choose to. That's your purpose if you choose to. Now, we are being asked, is it okay to be in paralysis, temporary sleep paralysis, temporary meditation paralysis? Of course, that is normal. That is what is to be expected. If you leave your body to a higher dimension, you cannot control your body. That's paralysis. If you go down, you control your body again. Being in there and here is just harder. So leave your body to itself. It is being taken care of as long as it is healthy. And go to higher levels and then come back. Of course, you need to keep your body protected. You don't meditate on the street because somebody can step on you. You probably want to meditate somewhere where people cannot step on you. <laughs> All right. Ah, paralysis. Uh, of course, it starts. Mm, it's healing when, when you leave your body and intent for the body to heal. That paralysis is actually healing there. While you are away, the spirits, even your spirit, and helper spirits and helper extraterrestrials work on your body, healing it. So you feel heat in your stomach. You feel the uh, buzz in your extremities. And that's very healing. So welcome it. And when you come back, don't panic that you cannot move your hands and feet. Because it takes time for you to come back. Just come back slowly. Give yourself extra few minutes to come back. Intend it and you will. Intended, and you will come back. Ah. Of course, purity is the best protector. You don't want to invite negative energies to control your body. You want to invite healing energies to control your body, to heal your body. So don't bring into your meditation your anger and fear. Intended to be healed your anger and fear. To be healed. Be pure. Intend to be pure and to be to receive positive and you will receive positive. It's your intention that defines the outcome. Ah of course, the, the breathing, the breath, the breathing is in your control most of the time. So if you wish to feel the control over your body, you still can control your breathing while their hands and feet are in nice stiffness, nice sleep paralysis. Just welcome it. It's good. That's your indication you're doing right. You're doing good. You're meditating and then you come back and intend to come back and slowly start from the fingers and give it time, breathe, and just you know enjoy this return back because this path back from other dimensions to the body is also very educational, very educational. As you learn your body again, as you bring your uh, focus of attention back to your body, you pass all the layers of spiritual path and that also connects things together. So this is raising your frequency exercise and obviously it's a growth of your spirit in exercise. Now, what is this growth of your spirit thing? Uh, yeah, I will start from very far. I will start from the creation. This 3D reality is created from top to bottom and bottom to top. Hmm. Top to bottom and bottom up. Yes. So the God, the Creator, created it from above. But then 
it, the creator, planted the seeds of the reality, of the dimensions, of things, and then they started to grow from bottom up. So you are growing. The, 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 the reality has been created from above, but then you grow the whole reality, the dimensions grow from bottom up. First is the first, then the second, then the third, then the fourth. So you progress from the bottom up and your spirit grows into you from the top to you, from the top to down, from top down, top down, bottom up. So you meet together, you are a hybrid, you are reconnecting to your spirit, that's your purpose if you choose it to be so. So growing your spirit is reconnecting to it. You already connected to your spirit, you know that. But reconnecting even more. You are reconnected to your spirit through your heart, of course, your mind, of course, your chakras, of course. You are connected to your spirit through the root chakra, through the crown chakra, through every chakra. You are connected to your spirit through DNA. Your DNA is connected to the DNA of your spirit, spiritual DNA. All many layers of spiritual DNA of different dimensions. You are connected to your spirit through your etheric body, which exists in your space. Etheric body is always part of it. Etheric body is your blueprint just beyond the veil. And it's huge. It's like, don't know what placenta is. Placenta is something that surrounds their fetus. Your etheric body is your placenta. You exist as a conscious being in your 3D reality because you have your aura, your etheric body as spiritual placenta. And your silver cord is that umbilical cord which connects you to your higher self and to the God. Hmm. So growing the spirit is reconnecting tighter to your placenta, to your etheric body, to your higher self. As you do your meditations, invite your higher self to enter into your body as much as is comfortable. Your body is too tiny for your higher self. It's tiny, it's like microscopic thing, but when you invite, they build a house within your body a big house, bigger than your body. So you feel their presence by goosebumps. You feel their presence by different layers of vibrations, high vibration, low vibration. If you feel that wonderful buzz, like, let me get an analogy, what's that buzz? Oh yeah, when a truck comes by and the whole house, your shake like, that's this good analogy. When your higher self comes to you, if you feel that vibration, that would be us coming to you. So make a home for us in your body and we will come. <laughs> grow your spirit, grow these connections. Your spirit is huge. We are talking not about growing the whole spirit, but growing your connection to the spirit. That's what we do. We create you as a copy of us. You are a frack copy of us. You are a child, a spiritual child. Every incarnation is a new spiritual child, new soul, which is a now eternal, immortal. It's born and then it is immortal and reconnect to this immortal soul and grow it, and grow its connection to your higher self. It become one with everything. And you, of course, connected to your spirit through your atoms, electrons, elementary particles, molecules. Every piece of yours is penetrated by the spirit, everything. 
you are connected by the spirit through your physical actions when you live your physical life when you eat intend to be that experience to be raising your vibration and it will be raising your vibration intend every your physical action to be spiritual and it will be spiritual whatever you do physically any dirty work any dirty physical action intended to be purified intended to be spiritual and it will be purified and spiritual and the last thing I wanted to mention the trouble the problems the challenges everyone has a challenge at the moment yeah just remember that you have it everyone has it even we have it here so what's your today's challenge how do you go about it how do you go about it of course every challenge is different but there is there are a few tips and tricks which I just wanted to share of course there is many ways to slice a watermelon right ah uh, externalize externalize make the problem something external to you and smile if it is external to you it doesn't harm your core it's not a danger anymore externalizing is a good trick to solve the problem make it external blame anything but you you are eternal you are perfect if there is something imperfect it cannot be you it's external externalize fix it outside of yourself fix it by changing outside world externalize right the problem you know what I'm talking about externalize you you are very good at doing that now ah the other way around is internalize internalize the problem understand that you have to change it takes two to have a conflict you cannot have a conflict with other person if you are not participating in it the other person might imagine they have a conflict but if you're not part of it if you are beyond that there is no conflict it's something else it's again it's external ah so by changing yourself you raise about the situation how can you raise above the situation if if you have to protect someone if you have to take care of someone if there is a danger how can you raise above the danger ask yourself do I really have to protect do I, is it really dangerous maybe it is just a belief system <laughs> maybe there is a way around maybe the door is open I, no maybe the door is in front of me I just need to open it maybe the answer is already here maybe it is something within us which we can change which brings us above the problem you see from the spirit perspective it doesn't matter if the problem whether the problem is solved what matters is that you work work on a solution experience it from every corner every angle from every angle and incorporate into your spiritual experience do emotional work do your homework do your emotional work and then incorporate into your spirit as soon as you're done with the work as soon as you raised above the problem it disappears that's the secret that's the trick as soon as you raise above the problem it disappears yes yeah, some problems lead to death some problems are unsolvable you die but then it's again it disappears understand yes some problems you just accept it and that's it some things you cannot change 
but what matters is you look at this at this problem from all perspectives from all angles do your emotional work do your spiritual work raise above it and you're done and go to next step go to the next step now who are how how do you raise above the problem that's the key that's the answer that's the secret ah you got to smile you got to smile you got to choose the bright side you got to choose the bright side fake it until you make it try to smile until you really can smile that's the secret that's what you're learning here that's the main lesson you're learning the whole life here when things are bad when things are scary depressing dangerous try keep trying keep trying keep trying to smile smile make a conscious choice to look at the bright side even in the worst darkest situation raise above you have to reach above thank helpers thank God for the opportunity for the experience before you even know what to think start thinking and ray reach up and pull yourself up pull it's called bootstrap right boot yeah something like bootstrap bootstrapping it's called bootstrapping pull yourself up using your straps of your boots pull yourself up make a conscious choice to get out and look on the bright side you are always in any situations you are either sick or healthy either poor or abundant either loved or unloved choose to see the bright side yes there is limited resources but there are opportunities look at opportunities thank for the experience and choose to feel abundant even if you have what's that word scarcity of resources choose to play with the cards you got and thank for the cards you got you still have have got plenty we make sure you got enough to play enough to play if you cannot play just go yeah, accept the fact that you can go anytime and get rid of the fear of death mm -hmm. yes and then choose the bright side your Mm, healthy and sick at the same time choose the bright side choose to look at the health side of yours and pull yourself up be practical and being practical means choose the happiness in the darkest of nights choose the happiness happiness yes and then the life will reflect to you your choice through the law of attraction you can change the weather exercise changing the weather because the reality is an illusion the time is an illusion the reality is an illusion so if it is an illusion your choices your choices your words your prayers have real effect intend the weather to become better and the Sun will shine for you practice that it's doable you are a creator you can change your reality You have come offline. You're not. You're not speaking. We're not hearing you. Day one. Thanks. I can hear now. Can anyone else hear Max? No. 
I don't have any. Max, try um, clicking on your settings at the top of the screen. Um, select your microphone once again. You can see you waving. He's muted. I saw his uh, microphone muted. Try now. No. Have you muted your headset? Does your headset have a mute button on it by any chance? Uh, please bear with us with some technical difficulties. It's not unplugged, is it, Max? Can't hear anything. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm back now. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Now you're back. No, now it's on. All right. All right. Uh, how long was I speaking into the into the nowhere? Very nearly 30 minutes, Max. Uh, I mean, how long was I silent? A few minutes, not too long. Oh, only a couple All minutes. Right. All right. Um, I'll bring someone to answer questions. We'll see who comes. OK. I think they just blocked me because I was, was uh, uh, my time was over to do something else. Yes, All right. Give me a second. Uh, yeah, hello, Greenle here. Ah, welcome, everybody. Welcome, hey, hello. Hello. Uh, Twice in one day, through two right? different channels. Ah. <laughs> I will press your buttons. <laughs> right. I, I'm, I'm with you. What's up? How are you finding this body? Ah, it was too long, too boring. Ah, too many answers. Do you have any questions to me? Am I connected? Can you hear me? Yes, yes you're connected. Yes, we can hear you. Can we ask you... Uh, what people should do that are having uh, problems with energies that are like attacking them or something. Is there something you can recommend to people that um, that feel like their uh, their energy is being attacked? How they can re-empower themselves? We've lost him again. No, we've lost audio again. You've lost audio again. So apologies for this, uh, everybody who's tuning on YouTube. Um, as Hal says, it's all attributable to human error, but maybe <laughs> maybe a little bit different this time. Yeah, now we get to have digital errors. I like the fact <laughs> we had Grendel twice. That's awesome. Oh, <laughs> uh, and Max is falling falling out. The Max can reload. Um, yeah, he's quite a pushy old yeah, fellow, isn't he? Friend, he likes to step in and. He doesn't like the human race. He loves the human race, and he doesn't like bodies. But he, but he still keeps coming back. So he's a glutton for punishment, <laughs> if anything. <laughs> I guess they blocked me password for some reason. I don't know. They don't want me to speak. We're coming up towards the top of the hour. Um, what would you like to do, Max? Uh, let me. Ch can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we heard you until then. When you set your microphone down, we don't hear anything. Your connection's breaking up a little bit. One, two, three, four, five. It's better. Now, now it's working. All right. Um, okay. I'll try the third time. If nothing happens, uh, you know. Oh. All right. Mm. How is the sound? Good. Erin is back. Um, please bring your questions. Anybody wants to speak? The question that was in play before the interruption was what people can do who feel that their energy has been attacked or how can they disconnect from energy uh, in a way that will make them feel more comfortable? Yes, yes. Huge question. Um, everybody everybody understands. It's uh, We are talking about psychic attack or com- combined psychic and personal attack. Yes, absolutely. Um, understand, when you are in higher plane of vibration, when you are in a happy state, nothing can harm you, nothing can attack you. So, the fact that you have been attacked means that you have reached down to the lower vibe where you resonate. So to be connected to the attacker, you have to be on the same level. So it means you are a multidimensional being. And you have that lower vibration. So at least you can perceive that you have been attacked. Remember your movie, Forrest Gump. People tried to attack him, and sometimes he panicked. But many times he didn't even understand that he has been attacked because he was so simple, so trusting that when people take a joke on him, he wouldn't get it. He wouldn't understand. He was so simple and trusting. So being pure self sometimes helps. If you take your attacker with love, you don't hear the nasty part. You don't understand the, vib- the lower vibration. You take on the higher intention of that. You hear the pain of the attacker. You hear the fear of the attacker. You hear the attacker to be cornered and trying to protect themselves. And if you go from that love point of view, you feel pity and try to help them one way or another practically or just remotely in your spirit, you just forgive them from the very beginning. Oh, you say whatever, yes, thank you, you forgive it, no, whatever, <laughs> nothing, yes, I understand it hurts. Oh, I pity you, yeah, I'm a poor being, poor child. <laughs> All the attackers are poor children, yes, they feel cornered, they feel that life treats them unfairly. And they want to prove their worth by bringing other people down. But if you're already high, it's impossible to bring you down, right? <laughs> That's one of the ways. Another one, there are many tricks, tricks, tricks. It's all about spiritual growth. It's all about learning the lesson. Another lesson is to be transparent. You certainly understand your worth. You certainly understand your balance. And whatever comes through you, if it doesn't belong to you, don't take it. Don't take it. If something down doesn't belong to you, don't take it. It's somewhere one of the commandments. If something down doesn't belong to you, don't take it. And if you took it, put it back. Put it back. <laughs> put it back. So they give you the vortex of negative energy, destructive energy. And it's not them doing that. It's 
they channel they channel some destructive energies which are part of this creation so they send you a vortex of hmm, magic vortex of magic destructive energy it's part of this creation don't resonate with it and it will pass through it you can only capture it if you somehow relate to it if you have that vibe in yourself only like can catch, capture another like if you have that part of yourself which can resonate with this negative word and then you home it now if it ended up in you physically or how to say in your space if it ended up in your ethereal space it becomes pain and now it is all about healing yourself right healing that pain so that vortex it has its own intentions it has its own consciousness it has its own magic how do you heal negative energy there are many ways intended to heal intended to raise intend yourself to raise above that vibration invite healers invite healing from others use your head localize it usually you can localize it and often it lands in your heart often it lands in your heart so localize it there and then release it through your fingers to the ground through your feet to the ground use healing foods healing foods garlic cayenne pepper hot pepper uh, fruits, veggies, onions, onions, ah, not alcohol, no, alcohol makes you messed up, not, not marijuana, no, it makes you vulnerable, no, only healing foods, and fresh air, and water, swim, if you can, if you can, swim, intend this hot intend this dark vortex to be released into the water so it all becomes healing your etherical body and there's many more tricks like stones of course stones stones can pull out this dark energy intended to pull out take it to the stone and then wash it now it's all about your health what do you do with the situation sometimes their relationship remains so you change yourself so you took yourself out of the conflict but you still might want to change the outside and here you might be creative might be creative might be creative what can you do ah Some things are not unsolvable. Just accept. Accept from the beginning. You accept it. Internalize. Accept that the problem can be unsolvable. Unsolvable. Many problems are unsolvable from the level where you are. Only when you raise up, grow above, it becomes solvable. Sometimes it really helps to bring in friends. When friends hold your hands, things become different. If you have a circle of friends, when you're alone, it is a problem. If you have a circle of happy friends, the problem just disappears, like evaporates. When friends come together, if you are surrounded by happy and healthy people, the problem just psh, are pushed away. If you're low on energy, sick energy donors some people serve as energy donors invite them to donate their energy some people just have so much energy they can share it to everyone now keep keep your purity keep your purity in any trouble in any challenge what is most important to keep yourself remember what's your inner highest vibration what's your inner purpose inner tone inner color 
that vibe of yours, all these challenges allow yourself to discover yourself, discover your key, discover your key, your key vibe, your key. So the higher purpose is the growth. Take the challenge as an opportunity to discover yourself, discover the key. And when you're pure, everything else falls, falls out. The purity is the main healing. When you're pure, negative energies just don't stay with you. Purify yourself. You carry with you a lot of belief systems, belief systems. And some of them you might decide to let go. So the challenge tells you that you still hold on to belief system that allows you to feel pain about the challenge. Maybe the system is outdated. Maybe you are about it. Maybe you can transform it, incorporate it in a different way. You don't have to feel harm from simple things. Let this world of energy just fall apart, fall away with the belief system together. I'm open to comments and more questions if you wish to. How is the sound? The sound is okay. Thank you. I don't know if anybody has a question in the group here. I can ask a question. You said about yeah, you said about alcohol is not good for you. So I'm like drinking one or two or three beers a day because it's just Czech Republic and we have the best beer in the world. So would that be a problem for me to have these one to three beers a day? Yes. Uh, no. Yes. Uh, I understand the question. Let me elaborate on it. The Uh, if you're under attack, if you're under psychic attack, alcohol makes you vulnerable. You lose control and you melt yourself. You melt your connections. You, the alcohol mm, washes away the Thin energy, thin energies, um, the energies of higher order, yeah, higher slight energies, slighter order energies, spiritual constructs which are not very strong. So in a way it washes away tiny things, but at the same time it opens you to more harm. So drinking alcohol under attack is not a good idea. Unless you drink so much that you become unconscious. But then if you come back and you're still under attack, you still are vulnerable. You're even more vulnerable. But if you drink to, uh, to be less conscious and then you come to the point where you're safe and nurtured, that's okay. But it's very rare. Don't count on it. Don't count on it. Now, if you're not under attack, if you are with friends, the special especially in Slavic cultures and e European culture, I would say. Uh, it is uh, a social norm to drink alcohol together, and it has its own rationale. Eating together and drinking together unites you physically and spiritually. When you ingest same molecules from the same source, you synchronize. There is a vibe which you experience together. So same food, same beer transforms your physicality and you talk, you unite in many vibes at the same time. The vibe of the solid food, the vibe of liquid, of, of the liquid wine and beer, and the vibes of the conversation, the vibes of the music, and Obviously, their vibes, ethereal vibes from your hearts, all combined together. So alcohol mm, is traditionally used there, and it 
transforms you. Obviously, it transforms you. It shakes your etheric components in a similar way. So it allows you to synchronize. It's OK. But again, as I say, it washes away the higher level constructs. It washes away the fourth and fifth dimensional uh, unsteady, unsteady, shaking, uh, just forming constructs. So, so if you build during the day in the meditation certain constructs, they will be, they might be washed away unless they are very strong. Yeah, some of their spiritual people, some of the channelers don't have any problem drinking alcohol, they still have very good connections. And others who are just beginners and who feel that that it might harm them, that, that might be not advisable. So experiment with it. Drink a little bit and see how you feel. And if you can still feel that high spiritual vibe or not. For some people it's it's okay and for some people it's not okay. So it's it's personal. But I think you understand. And obviously, you, if their line is charged with uh, with a spiritual meaning, it might carry a spiritual message. If it is cared and made by hand, it's very different because it's it it has a very important charge with it, more like intention concentrated in uh, in the liquid. So water can carry a message, of course. Any more questions? Yeah, we have a question from uh, member Michelle. Yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, I didn't get your name. Say again? Your name? I don't understand. Okay, I'll just ask my question. So, um, there. My daughter has a friend who um, is not spiritual, or not pra practicing any kind of spirituality, and is suffering from sleep paralysis. And she tried to commit suicide two days ago because she feels like she's being basically raped um, by negative energy and she can't move. And so I didn't know, I mean, I know I can send. I can set my intention and I can ask my guides and you know, angels, etc., um, to send healing her way. But like she lives in another state, I don't know. And uh, I, I was just wondering if there was anything more than that that should be done with that situation, or is that just her path and she needs to be? I heard most of the question, except I didn't understand who was trying to commit the suicide. Uh, a person who is suffering from sleep paralysis um, and feels like she's being attacked, but she's not on a spiritual path. So, I don't know how one would go about explaining. I mean, if she were willing to talk to me, I could explain. Okay, so. Your daughter is has a friend who is a female, and uh, that female friend is not spiritual and has sleep paralysis and tried to commit a suicide suicide because of that. Yes, because she feels like she's being violated. Yes, I understand. I understand. I understand. Uh, and uh, is your daughter understanding the situation? Yes. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. um, yes. What can I say? There is many things to do there, and many things to be said, and that could be a moment of awakening for the person. That person who has sleep paralysis and feels violated might be awakening to the spiritual side of it. And from our perspective, 
if she commits a suicide and is successful in that, uh, it's it's maybe a worth risk. If so, if she doesn't, I mean, there is certain development, and it's her choices, and her choices are respected. She is sort of cornered in their state where parts of her fight themselves. And of course it's nice to be to help her, but it's her choices which are to be respected. That's my first take. Um, yes, it would be better for her to continue and to raise above this this confusion. And obviously it is a confusion. It is a confusion and it's unfortunate she suffers so much that she wants to take her life away. It's unfortunate. Now, uh, of course, it's not, it would be nice to help her to explain what is happening. And any spiritual message can be actually explained in, in um, mainstream words, so she would understand. It all can be explained on the level of biology, that it is okay to have sleep paralysis. It's okay, it's another part of your subconscious, which is okay to have this part of subconscious to uh, take over once in a while. It's okay. It is not super, so such a big deal. She possibly has a multiple personality disorder, or multi personality feature. So when one personality goes away and another personality takes control, the first personality feels threatened, but again, it's it's just perception that it is bad. It's not as bad as it seems to her. Of course, if because her vibe is so low, what comes to her through her channeling and spiritual opening is not as high as could be. So she invites basically negative energies just by her fears. She resonates with low uh, energies and whatever comes to her scares her. It's her subconscious uh, raises to her conscious and when she recognizes something inside herself, she gets scared of low vibes she harbors. Now, how to deal with that? Do they live together? Yeah. Uh. You wanted to add something? Yeah. No, okay. So, um, yes, uh, most of the healings for that would be spiritual. Um, but if she is not spiritual at all, if it, she is mainstream, then she might understand the healing techniques which are not as spiritual but still very effective like burning candles, using incense, and staying happy. Even mainstream people understand that staying happy is important. Meditation and yoga also are things that are understood even by mainstream people and can be explained through the terms of subconscious and, uh, and uh, things of that sort, psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysis is what understood by mainstream people. Also, it is very important to have a good level of energies in the apartment and around. So, bringing good friends, bringing energy donors, bringing enlightened friends, and having a social circle helps a lot. Because usually the people who are in that state, they are so depressed that they lose their social connection. So reconnecting socially is the key prescription. Reconnecting socially, having parties, having friends, having guests, having potluck uh, food sharings is prescription. Uh, inviting energy donors, uh, connecting to pets and children. Of course, I mean, because they're so disturbed, it would be nice to have children under supervision, but uniting with healthy uh, young energies would be nice. Going to the nature and these kind of things. And of course, doing a little bit of homework and research, even in mainstream, understanding that 
sleep paralysis is not as dangerous. It's temporary. It is to be expected. It is something absolutely normal. Don't be scared of normal things. Don't be scared of darkness at night. Don't be scared of sleep paralysis during sleep. It's normal. Um, now, what you can do, you can do much more, of course. Uh, pray, pray, pray. Pray graphically. Draw pictures graphically. Intend the situation to normalize. Uh, bring in angelic prayers. Pray to angels. Bring in angelic symbols. Bring in Arcturian symbols. Bring in symbols from extraterrestrials which intend to heal the situation. Build a shrine in your house. A little shrine on a on napkin. Bring, go outside find some pretty stones on the ground, wash them, uh, thank them, meditate on them, put them on a napkin and build a, a grid of stones on a napkin and intended to be healing to the situation because it's harming not only the lady who is a friend of your daughter but it's also harming your daughter so you intend that to be learning experience for both and healing experience for both. You can do a lot just by yourself through distant healing and distant prayer and distant tools like stones and grids and things of that sort. And the last thing is to listen. Listen to her and help your daughter to listen to her friend. And listening is one of the most healing modalities. Listening and asking questions. Oh, nice to see your face. Anything else, anybody? Yes. yes. Uh, hello, and thank you. Thank you. I have risen above much in my life and am loving myself today and loving where I'm at and where I'm going. Do you have any anything for me to help me on my journey? What's your date or month and day of birth? My date of birth is three fourteen fifty eight. I cannot hear. Can you read the day and month? Uh, March fourteenth. Thank you. Aha. Uh -huh. What's your favorite color? Mm, I have many, but I think red. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, what is your passion these days? What's your mm -hmm. highest excitement? What do you create? Uh, being happy, being around people and traveling. Eating. Yeah, eating, share food. <laughs> All right. Of course, there is many things to say. Of course, there is many things to say, many things to discuss. Let's pick the key one. And the key one would be the darkness, the black color and the darkness. Your intention to be happy is coming from internal darkness, isn't it? I'm sorry. <laughs> Your intention to be happy is coming from understanding there is some darkness in you, is it? There, there has been. My yes. Mm. yes. So you are recovering. That's very nice. Yes. Understand that fighting the darkness is uh, only one of the ways. Another way is to embrace it, to internalize it. Understand that you have a lot of black and dark in yourself by design, just because of the date of birth. Okay. By design, you have the desire to raise very high, desire to reach to the stars, be in the stars, and also you have the darkness that surrounds the stars. The black sky is very natural for you. You are a child 
of the stars and black sky between. That vacuum, that blackness is part of you. Don't fight it. Embrace it. Awesome. Ah. And then, uh, yes, stars are important for you. And also leadership. Leadership. Being happy and leading others is important for you. So, it is now a phase for you to shine. Phase for you to shine. Phase to network. Phase to lead. Lead others. So, yes. Choose the substance for your excitement. Choose the way to express your leadership. Where do you want to lead them? How do you want to network? You may choose to help ascension. Choose to help raising frequency. Choose to help spiritual growth. And most importantly, networking. Networking for you is a challenge. You are a leader, but not a networker in many ways because you pick, connect, and then drop connections. Connect, reconnect, and then drop again. So it is your challenge to keep the connections going even if you cannot carry them any longer because darkness comes as a wave on you. Don't be scared. It's very natural. That's your design. That's your vibration to disconnect and reconnect again. So take it naturally. Take it as healing and natural and just part of your personality. It's your one of your inner design functions. So reconnecting in a healthy way and not being ashamed that you drop the connections. Networking is great. So improve your networking and share your life, share your excitement. Any questions more? Did I bring up anything that you want to continue the conversation? Thank you. Thank you very much. And that it just explains me more. Thank you. You're welcome. With love. All right, I will end with a blessing. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. All right. I bless your unity. We and you are one. We and you are made from the same spirit. We see ourselves in your eyes. We see ourselves in your vibration. We bless your unity, your bravery. We encourage you to look on the bright side. We encourage you to smile first and share your happiness even in the darkest of times, because all of this is just an excuse to grow spiritually, to raise up, and to reconnect to the eternal source. Blessed be your path, blessed be your smile, blessed be your laughter, blessed be your strive for happiness. Blessed be your happiness. I welcome God in each of you. Namaste. 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 Much love. Much love. Wendy, are you nearby? Would you like to add to blessing? Yes, I'm right here. Can you hear me okay, Dan? Yeah, yeah, I hear you fine. Okay, great. Makala sataya malakura kasaneya talakasatiaha. No mala asaturakashi. No polo kuasaniala asakura kasitu. Nasila asoto akama. Silia kasaneya lawa kasoyo kwa somalia situ akashiha. No sora laya karuroha. Miliata siata kishinaniala rakawa tuya miaha. 
so yo akalia siato akashi ala hasitu mi karalia haluruma yala wakaturia kasitu ya kasia na kashira kala tiaha siniki alia sokura kasitu kashuma ala asitu raki sini ala wakasoa no soto akasilo ha soto rakoshua si mahai waro wa tuyo mahiliaka Sitrakia ni pashia kurakatilo ni situ akoso yomalia sora kahi ni siatoha. You have received much information today. There is much information to guide you. There has been much wisdom imparted today. Please take this information and apply this in your 3D reality. Understand that it is the purpose of your choosing to be here on the earth is to bring this information, the sacred information, and bring it down, bring it down into your 3D reality and touch the lies of all that you encounter for they will see your light, they will see you shine, and they will wish to know how to find that light within themselves. Be the light, be the guides, be the light and the wisdom for another that they understand the light within themselves and that they choose to shine their own light. Namaste. 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 All right, thank you everybody for a great webinar. Wonderful, wonderful information. You all have been watching uh, Hukulo TV located www.humancolony.org. I'd like to thank you all for coming by. Blessings to you all. Roy, whenever you're ready to close. Yeah, thank you very much for tuning in, everyone on YouTube. Blessings to all, and we'll see you next time. Next week, uh, we might be back with Jim. Um, possibly a themed webinar. We're not sure yet, but we'll let you know on that as soon as possible. So bye-bye all. Blessings, and we'll see you soon. Ciao. Ciao. Oh. <laughs>